we, we need to go back to the origin of the DSH agreement. You'll recall that originally the investor was in negotiations with the previous Labour Party administration. And we had been negotiating with them for quite a while. We never reached an agreement with them. There were too many clauses in what they proposed as an agreement, which we thought were not in the best interest of St. Lucia. And we then proceeded to negotiate them for almost a year to try to, to get an acceptable agreement. Now, we were not, we are not opposed to development. We, we actually invite foreign investors to come into this country. But whatever is agreed upon, we strive always, and every political party should always strive to ensure that it's in the best interest of the government and people of St. Lucia. By the time of the elections in June 2016, there was no agreement with DSH. Within a month, of the change of government and the, the last UWP administration, the leader of the opposition as prime minister signed an agreement with DSH. In fact, I will tell you some of the clauses we thought were offensive were actually included and signed into, into force by the, the leader of the opposition who was then prime minister. And you need to put that in context. Then we are a Labour Party saying, no, we've not reached a point where we believe this agreement is in the best interest of St. Lucia. And within one month, one month of being the new government, it was signed. Of course, we know how St. Lucians reacted when they saw some of the details of that agreement. Let, let's fast forward now. Since we came, the Labour Party came back into government, we had our engagement with DSH. We repeated our position to DSH. We are not opposed to a development in Viewport. We want development projects all over the country, in, but they must be done in a way which is acceptable to the people of St. Lucia and consistent with our laws. And we said to them, the DSH agreement, as we know it, has to be renegotiated. We need to sit at the table and to discuss the provisions because there are provisions that we had a difficulty with. DSH's position then was that the, the why they had not been able to implement the agreement because the last government, led by the leader of the opposition, had not stuck to their, um, their commitments and did not, in a rightful manner, um, implemented what was agreed, and their manner of conducting business was questionable. In a sense, that is what the, the message we got. We indicated clearly again to the SH that we needed to renegotiate the agreement, that they were just not... Um, clauses that we found acceptable, not in the best interest of St. Lucia. I see. And, and some of them required legislative changes, some of them required um, specific arrangements for DSH. So we, we indicated that to them, we, let us renegotiate it. They asked us to basically resubmit a new agreement as a basis for discussion. They did not want us to cancel, you know, attempt to cancel the previous agreements. And they submitted a new agreement to us for negotiation. The agreement virtually starts off saying that the last government was a failure. The last government did not do business in the right way and they did not keep to the commitments of the DSH agreement. We indicated to them, we still had a difficulty for what they were proposing. It was not in the best interest of St. Lucia. And we had the back and forth, back and forth as is done in negotiations. Then they indicated to us, look, um, St. Lucia has not delivered, especially under the last government, and therefore they would they are minded to go to arbitration. The St. Lucia Labour Party government, which is in, in office right now, has never cancelled any agreement, did not abandon any agreement. Our position with DSH was one of the government of St. Lucia, although led by Alan Chassé, signed an agreement. We want an opportunity to renegotiate it. So contrary to what the leader of the opposition said, we did not cancel any agreements. But he is right that DSH has indicated to us that they are, um, well, they still notice on us of an intent to go to arbitration because in their view, the last government did not deliver. So Alan Chasse signed an agreement with them and then found out he could not deliver and the people of Sanusha did not favor what he wanted to do. And therefore, in, in their view, in their view, he had not delivered, and therefore St. Lucia had not delivered. And they would want St. Lucia to pay them, pay them a fee for them to walk away. Of course, our position was that let's go to arbitration. 
So he has announced publicly, and you would notice that this government has never gone public with those details because we thought that in the conduct of business, we should respect the negotiations that are going on. And yes, they did indicate to us and serve notice of an intent to go to arbitration. And we prepared ourselves. If they decided to go there, we would go to arbitration. We told them under no circumstances would the government of Central pay millions of dollars to DSH for them not to go to arbitration. I need to know, how does the leader of the opposition know that there is an intention on the DSH part to sue St. Lucia? Why is it as a party and as a leader, former prime minister, knowing that DSH is going to sue the government of St. Lucia, you would host a party activity at the DSH facility. Why is it you would allow your party to have a dance and fundraiser at DSH, knowing that they wanted to sue the government and people of Central for millions of dollars? So first of all, how did you how did he get to know that? Is it that he's in contact with DSH? Is it that he's colluding with DSH? Secondly, knowing that there's an intention by DSH to, to sue the, the government and people of St. Lucia, why would you go and have a party activity in that same facility of, with the same people who intend to sue um, the government and people of St. Lucia? And, and I think these are critical issues because when the government and people of St. Lucia are sued for millions, tens of millions of dollars, do you know the destruction and the suffering that can cause to the government of, and people of St. Lucia? For an agreement that you signed, how is it that he knows all the details of, of what DSH is going to do? How is it? And I think he needs to tell the people of St. Lucia why in the first place he signed such a horrendous agreement. What was on the table? What was discussed? How did he reach a conclusion to sign that agreement? And now that DSH, in confidence to us, and we've never said anything in public, up to to, uh, uh, before today, that he knows DSH is planning to sue St. Lucia. He needs to come open and transparent with St. Lucia and tell us what's his true engagement in DSH. But the issue is not about us. The issue is about Alan Chastain. Tell us what's the United Workers Party and himself, his involvement in DSH. How does he know those details? Why did he make it public? How, does, how is he involved? Why would his party be having an activity at DSH knowing they're about to sue the government people of St. Lucia? For me, the people of St. Lucia can always be assured that we will fight and protect their best interests. There's no doubt about it. We have seen the intent, they still intent on us, notice on us. We have engaged um, some legal minds at considerable cost to assess, to review, and to give us advice. Our team is ready any day we have to go to arbitration to yeah. defend the interests of St. Lucia. So, so there is no question about our commitment, our dedication, to defend and fight for the best interests of St. Lucia. But again, I call upon the leader of the opposition to explain his involvement with DSH and tell us what's the true story. Well, there are two things to note in regard to this. First of all, the government institution does not own the racetrack. The government institution has no rights over the racetrack. The government institution cannot decide how to use the racetrack. So that's it, one. And secondly, even if the Southern group was had any intent on asking DSH to use their racetrack, the fact is they've had races and they've never allowed them to have any Creole race. Or even when they've not had races, to allow them to use it on off days. So there's no intention on the part of DSH or the opposition to take the interest of the Southern horse, horse owners and the disabled boys and those guys to in, into account and to make them have a facility. Well, again, the government of St. Lucia has no rights in the facility, none at all.